Hello everyone. I have a few videos on YouTube posted talking about this Chinese diesel heater. I bought this all-in-one style Chinese diesel heater from Amazon at least two years ago. This one's called New Ideas. I think they're about all the same, just with a different name. But I've had no issues out of this whatsoever. I have a video posted on the modifications I made to it, which makes it a lot safer and a little more user-friendly. I also have some videos posted of me using this to heat the back of this uh, truck shell camper. I use it to heat my pull-behind RV. And I use it to heat the shop in my basement from time to time. So this thing is really versatile. It's really portable, easy to carry around, and it works out great for me. So from time to time, I will go car camping and set up a base camp with uh, just a family style tent when two or more of us go camping and i bring along this tent it's just a cheap tent eight i think it's an eight by ten foot tent you could get this style tent at walmart or dick sporting goods something like that nothing fancy about this this is a three season tent which means it's not made to withstand a snow load or ice or high winds or anything like that but I'll go camping when it's pretty chilly at night from time to time using this. It's down maybe to around freezing. And I thought, wow, it would be really nice to have uh, this heater hooked up, um, heating the inside of that tent. I'm not sure how well it will do. This tent has a lot of ventilation, a lot of screen in it. It's really made for mild temperatures, so there's uh, a lot of uh, mesh on this tent. And I'm going to try to modify it a little bit so... Um, it's enclosed a little bit better, so there's not as much cold air coming in or hot air leaving. So we'll see how that works out. I also bought this duct work, this uh, flexible foil duct. It's made, uh, it's aluminum. It's three inches by 20 feet. This was like about, I think this was 20 bucks at Lowe's. I've got some clamps, some super duper heavy duty uh, magnets, and I've got piece of plywood with a hole cut out in it this was left over from a project so i'm going to use all this set this tent up set the heater up check the uh, temperature outside check the temperature inside and see how well it will heat this cheap family style tent in cold weather Now that I have this tent set up, let me show you what I mean about all of the mesh and screen on this tent. If you take the outer rain fly off, that's all mesh screen underneath there. So with the rain fly on there, there's still a lot of area here in between the uh, rain fly and the main body of the tent. It lets a lot of air circulate back and forth in the tent. So that's great in mild temperatures but when it's cold and I'm trying to heat the inside of the tent I'd like to minimize that so I thought well velcro would be great but I'll use those magnets to close off this gap I want to secure the outer rain fly against the main body of the tent so there's not that huge gap underneath here and that way I'm thinking it will allow less air warm air to escape from inside the tent Okay, now that I've added those magnets, it has drawn that outside rain fly up against the main body of the tent so that it doesn't have that big gap in there anymore. There's still room for ventilation, but check out how strong these magnets are. I can still pull this guy line out and the magnet still stays attached. I'm gonna add this plywood to the front door. I'll just clamp it couple spots and once I hook that ductwork up here it will keep everything secure and in place so on the end of this duct 
I cut out a piece of three inch aluminum rigid duct pipe and stuck in the end of this pipe so it makes it a little easier to attach and a little more secure. So if someone in the middle of the night needs to get out of the tent easily enough, leave the tent, the ductwork stays in place. Once you return from the inside, just zip it back up. And that way there's no messing around with the ductwork getting in and out. It stays in place. Okay, I have the ductwork hooked up. I hooked up my exhaust with an extension just to make sure the exhaust fumes don't come back into this inlet here. I don't care if the exhaust fumes come in this inlet. This is just for the fire. This is the air that I breathe here. Now, this thing cannot set out in the open like this. If it's going to be raining or snowing or sleeting or anything like that, this has to be covered up with a canopy or something. You don't let this get wet. So I'm just going to leave it out here and test it out here in the open for now because there's no rain in the forecast. Let me also say that this is best for a primitive type setup where you do not have electricity. If I had AC electricity, I would just use an electric space heater. Or you could do what I do in the basement. I use this to heat the workshop in my basement. I use this AC to DC power supply. I plug one end into the wall and the other end I plug into this diesel heater and it works great. That would work, but I don't think that's ideal. I think that this is better for a primitive setup without AC electricity. I'm going to use this 100 amp hour lithium battery box that I built. This will last two or three nights easy without having to recharge it. If I wanted to top the battery off, I could use my solar panel set up to just keep it topped off, but I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that. Two or three nights, no problem. If I wanted to, I just plug this straight in to the battery box and away we go. I'm going to use this longer cable. It's a heavier duty cable and it's got some heavy duty ring connectors on it to hook this up with. Also, let me say that if I wanted to, an alternative to heat that tent is that Mr. Heater little buddy. I've used that many times to heat that tent and it works pretty good, but there are some cons to it. it there's a condensation issue using that propane heat. The heat is really hot in front of this thing. If you get that too close to the tent wall or your blow up mattress or something, it will melt it. If a piece of paper falls on it or something flammable, it, will ca it could catch on fire. Also, it's not going to last all night with one cylinder of uh, propane. You're going to run out. So there are some disadvantages to that. The air is not circulated with this. With this diesel heater, it's forced air. It's circulated well. Uh, it's cheaper to run. It's going to run 24 hours straight on a tank of fuel if I wanted to. And I think it's just a better application for this type of uh, primitive setup. Right now, it's not that cold outside. It's not freezing, so I'm going to wait for it to get down to freezing temperatures. I might have to wait till the morning, and we'll fire this thing up and give it a test run. Okay, the next morning, it is mid-30s out here. I'm going to set this sensor on this chair inside the tent and fire this diesel heater up. Right now, 32, 33 degrees. I'm handling these sensors, so it's throwing the temperature off just a little bit. Basically mid-30s, close to freezing, just above freezing. Let's fire the diesel heater up and see how long it takes to heat that tent up and how warm it will get. I'm going to leave it on a low setting to start with and see how that does. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. I've had this running. Right now it's on the lowest setting. I've got 60.7 degrees inside, 34 outside. This is actually the indoor sensor. The, it's labeled backwards. But 
not bad. It's amazing how much heat still goes in that tent. This duck work, it's got to lose a little bit of heat being exposed out here in cold temperatures. But um, the thing is really warm to touch it. But walking inside here, I can already feel the heat even feels like it's transferred through the tent. Oh yeah. Nice and cozy in here. Wow. Huge difference. How nice that will be on a cold night. So I'm going to call this a successful test and say yeah definitely worth this setup and I think I'll use it in the future. Well I hope you got something out of this video. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one.